As more and more devices that we interact with daily become smarter and more interconnected, there will eventually need to be a way to pay for and log those transactions between devices. This is exactly what the IOTA Foundation envisioned and aimed to solve with their platform IOTA. So stick around and let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Sprague, and I've had my eye on IOTA since 2017, as it's the coin that taught me not to FOMO into things, being the only coin I've ever sold at a loss. However, despite this, I still think that IOTA and the tech that powers it are extremely powerful. The Internet of Things is a fast-growing paradigm that's expected to reach $1.8 trillion in market size by the year 2028. This is due to the fact that more and more devices are now capable of being controlled over Wi-Fi. Now, these devices range from what you might expect in things like lighting systems to things that you might wholly unsuspect, such as cat litter trays, belts, and even flip-flops. And with so many devices now able to share their data over the internet wirelessly, it just makes sense that eventually something would come along to allow you, the user, and the companies that make these products to monetize that data somehow. For example, what if while you're driving around, your car is selling the data of what potholes you've come across to your local council, the traffic conditions to Google Maps, and even the temperature outside to your local weather services? In the digital age, data is the most important asset that a company Company has. But before I get into it, if you enjoy my content, you want to see more crypto coin deep dives, tech explanations, or even just opinions from myself, please do consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Thanks. While a lot of other chains set out to try and compete with Ethereum in the DeFi space, IOTA was instead started with the mantra that companies will always pay for data. This means that IoT devices that currently exist are actually being underutilized in the fact the data they collect is wasted. On top of this, the IOTA Foundation did identify some aspects of blockchain technology that could be improved, namely in the fact that they just went ahead and reinvented the wheel by switching to a DAG-based design or directed acyclic graph that they called the Tangle. Predating any real cryptocurrency adoption, IOTA's first foray into marketing was a post on Bitcoin Talk, a forum that housed most of the discussion around cryptocurrencies before Reddit rose to dominance as the place to be for all altcoin discussions. This post mostly just outlined the differences between a traditional blockchain and the Tangle, which now would probably gain little to no attention. However, back then, in less than a year, it had gained 300 pages of replies. Particularly impressive, considering you couldn't even buy it yet. The choice to use a DAG instead of a blockchain came about because of already apparent issues with blockchain scalability. When the end goal of the Tangle was to have millions of devices communicating with each other seamlessly across it, the fact that blockchains were already showing scaling issues even back then was just too much of a barrier for them to overcome. So with 300 pages of replies, there was certainly a strong support from the community as to what IOTA was trying to do. But saying that, there was also a lot of detractors aimed mostly at the Tangle itself. The Tangle is pretty much what you'd expect it to be. It's just a big mass of interconnected transactions. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into what a DAG is at its fundamental level because I have done that previously in my nano video up here. However, if you do want me to do a dedicated video on them, leave me a comment down below and I'll consider doing a crypto bits on it in the future. All you need to know is that unlike a blockchain, which has a single chain and each block is built upon a previous block, the Tangle can have a node or new transaction be built on any number of previous nodes. In the case of the Tangle, any node or transaction added to the network must be built on two previous transactions. On top of this, the submitter for the transaction being added to the Tangle needs to do the proof of work required to confirm the two transactions it's being built on. Once a transaction's been added, it becomes what's known as a tip which is just a transaction that has not received any confirmations yet. Now, logically, there will always be a single tip. However, in reality, there could be hundreds at any one time. However, somewhat unlike the name Tangle suggests, the directed part of DAG does actually mean that it moves in a direction, with persistent unconfirmed transactions becoming known as sub-branches. This means that the tip selection algorithm is extremely important. For example, if tip selection is random, then it means that any new transaction could be built on a previous state of the tangle. This would be bad because you would effectively be confirming transactions that no longer need to be confirmed. 
To combat this, the protocol has implemented a way of weighting a branch. This means that if a transaction is added to the tangle and is built upon two older transactions, it's less likely to be selected as a tip itself. However, by building on lesser confirmed or unconfirmed tips, your transaction has a much higher chance of being confirmed itself. There's a great set of blog posts written by the IOTA Foundation that could do that explanation far more justice than I can, so I will link them down below in the description. Now, one fundamental reason that the first ever cryptocurrency was a blockchain implementation and not a DAG is because of how easy it is to solve the double spend issue in a blockchain. A double spend is where a network participant attempts to try and spend the same funds twice. Now, in a blockchain, this is fairly simple. If they have spent those funds in a previous block, they no longer have them. And if the block already contains a transaction that says they've spent them, then a new transaction cannot be added. In a DAG, however, there is no concrete state of the ledger like there is in a blockchain. This means that I could, if I wanted to, submit two transactions that spend the same funds twice. So in effect, we need a way of determining which of those transactions we should listen to. For example, if I was to spend the same funds twice on online services, how could the keeper of those shops be sure that they can send me the product? and that it's not going to be reversed by the tangle. And this is where the IOTA protocol implements a feature called confirmation confidence. As I mentioned, the IOTA protocol does not pick tips at random and instead uses a very clever algorithm to do so. This means that unconfirmed transactions will eventually be left behind and orphaned. To work out how confident we can be that a transaction will be selected, we could just simply run the tip selection algorithm a hundred times. And now the number of times that our new transaction is chosen would be a confidence rating in the form of a percentage. For example, if our new tip was chosen 95 times out of 100, we could say that there's a 95% confidence that it will be selected. Using the confirmation confidence, the shopkeeper could be sure if the confidence percentage is high enough that the sale is final. Unfortunately, however, the tangle is not immune to another attack vector that blockchains suffer from, which is the 51% attack. In the tangle, however, a 51% attack is performed when a participant submits a transaction and then intentionally builds on top of their own transactions. Now, as I said, there is a small amount of proof of work required to be done to confirm a transaction. So if this network participant has a higher hash rate or higher computing power than the rest of the network, they could build their sub-branch out confirming their own transactions constantly faster than the main branch can do so itself. And the way that the IOTA protocol actually currently solves this is using a centralized component called the coordinator. The coordinator in the tangle effectively takes a snapshot and submits it as a new tip every two minutes. All transactions included within the snapshot are effectively given a confidence rating of 100%. That is to say they cannot be undone. This means that now, not only would an attacker have to have a higher computational power than the rest of the network, they would actually also have to perform their attack within the two minute time frame between coordinator snapshots. Now, as I mentioned, currently the coordinator is centralized and it is run by the IOTA Foundation. The reason for doing this that they've given is the fact that while IOTA was growing, the negative aspects of having a centralized component far outweighed the risk of being attacked. It was inevitable, however, that the IOTA protocol would eventually be moved to a new consensus mechanism, allowing them to kill off this coordinator. Considering that every single part of IOTA up until this point was done with a view to decentralization. This is why in IOTA 2.0, which is currently running as a devnet until the IOTA foundation are sure that it's definitely secure enough, the consensus mechanism has been changed to allow them to remove the coordinator while not compromising network security. Now, I'm not actually gonna to go too deep into IOTA 2.0 because things in the crypto space change so frequently that if I was to try and say everything that IOTA 2.0 is right now, chances are by the time it comes out, this information would actually be wrong. This also goes for Shimmer and Assembly, the two other products that IOTA Foundation are coming out with. However, I am gonna give them a brief overview in this video. This does, however, mean when they do eventually launch, I will do a follow-up video where I go in depth on what IOTA 2.0 actually entails and the two new platforms. But for now, the simplest way to explain this new consensus change is that instead of hashing power, the new protocol relies on network nodes to confirm consensus. 
This is important, because for the network to be secure originally, it needed an honest majority of hashing power. The problem is that hashing power is only actually used when transactions are being confirmed. So what this means is that at times when the network's quiet and there's low amounts of hashing power being used to confirm transactions, it'd be quite easy for an attacker to come on and overtake the network. In the new system, the nodes first select what they believe is going to be the branch that should be the main branch, using a consensus method called fast probabilistic consensus. This is basically where the node asks its neighboring nodes which transactions they are going to approve of. The selection for which transactions the nodes are going to approve of generally tends to be the transactions that arrived first. If enough nodes confirm of a transaction, it will then have tips selected and move on to the final stages of confirmation. This then repeats for every new transaction that's added to the network. Using this new method, the coordinator can be turned off without compromising the security of the network. However, if you use the Tangle Visualizer, you can see that the new Tangle looks very different to the old one. IOTA 2.0 will also bring new features such as smart contracts to the layer one. When IOTA 2.0 goes from being a dev net to being rolled out on the main net, Shimmer will take its place as the dev and test nets. However, the aim is that Shimmer will eventually be its own network. To begin with, Shimmer will be used to test features that are going to be rolled out to the main net. However, unlike in a lot of other other DevNet and testnets, they will not reset the state of the ledger each time there is an update and instead allow it to grow into its own thing. The main point of this is to be sure that any updates they plan on rolling out to the mainnet can actually handle real world use and aren't just sustainable in a test environment. However, as I said, once there's no more features to be rolled out to the IOTA mainnet or the state of Shimmer diverges too much from the main chain, it will then go on to become its own thing where they implement functionality either not required are not compatible with the base chain. For example, the main purpose of the IOTA mainnet is for B2B applications, where companies can take advantage of the fast and fearless data transfer. This means that adding something like multi-token support to the base chain might actually impede the functionality these companies are using, and therefore it makes much more sense to implement it into its own version of IOTA. Along with this, not to be confused with the layer one smart contracts, IOTA has now also announced assembly. Assembly is a network anchored to the IOTA layer one that allows for automatically sharded and cross-chain compatible smart contracts to run. It will also handle the validation of the smart contracts running on the layer one. This would mean that smart contracts built on top of IOTA could communicate with things like the EVM or even other chains if they wanted to, while being able to take advantage of IOTA's feeless nature. Moving on to IOTA token supply and distribution, the max supply of IOTA is 2 quadrillion 770 trillion. However, this is actually a little misleading given how you purchase IOTA. The unit of IOTA that you purchase when you buy one IOTA from an exchange is actually an M IOTA, where the M stands for 1 million IOTA. This means the max supply quoted by a lot of publications is actually 2.7 billion IOTA, which actually is 2.7 billion M IOTA. Now, over 74% of IOTA have actually been staked, but unlike a lot of other chains, staking IOTA does not introduce more iota into the supply by way of reward. Instead, staking iota is how the shimmer token and the assembly token are going to be distributed out to the holders. So what this ends up meaning is the circulating supply of iota is actually only about 120 million. In terms of price speculation, it's actually kind of difficult to calculate this one because iota doesn't really have any competition in the internet of things space. However, it makes sense to compare it to other DAG based chains because at the end of the day, if a platform can do fast and feeless transfers and it gets large enough, it will start to dominate the market share taken up by other chains. This is similar to how the Python programming language was originally meant to be a scripting language, but is now used for pretty much everything under the sun. So if we compare it to Ripple, which is currently the largest fast and feeless chain available on the market, you get a potential upside of 1500%, ending in a resulting price of $20. But now it's time for my concerns. And it's not often that I'm not actually concerned about the platform in its current state, 
but more concerned about where the platform's going. I just don't like that IOTA is deviating from its original goal and trying to now make a name for itself in a market that already has some major big established players. Now, I want to first preface this by saying this obviously is just my opinion and I might end up eating my words if IOTA 2.0 Shimmer and Assembly launch and they do manage to gain the market capitalization that they are expecting to gain from it, but I just think this is the wrong move. Now, I think the protocol changes coming in IOTA 2.0 and the introduction of smart contracts make absolute sense for IOTA's future. The parts I have a problem with are Shimmer and Assembly. With the introduction of these two new platforms, it suggests that IOTA no longer has confidence that the Internet of Things space can actually perform as well as they initially expected. Either that, or they just want to pivot into a much larger market so they can make more money. That being that of DeFi. And as much as I understand why they might have done this, we don't need another DeFi smart contract chain. And I think splitting IOTA into three different tokens just makes an already confusing platform even more confusing. To encourage developers to move to a new platform, there needs to be a big enough value proposition for them to do so. Take Cardano for example, you could argue that Cardano's implementation of smart contracts and the fact that it has lower fees makes it a better alternative than Ethereum. The problem is that in the last 30 days, Cardano's only had 70 new smart contracts built on it, whereas Ethereum has had 500 new smart contracts in the last 48 hours alone. If IOTA wants to try and compete with the likes of Cosmos or Anchor for cross-chain compatibility, or with Ethereum for DeFi and smart contracts, they're gonna need to give developers a massive reason to actually move and use their platform instead. And if you compare this to their original goal of the Internet of Things, where they were scooping up partnerships left and right with some massive companies such as Bosch and Microsoft, you might start to see where my concern comes from. But despite this concern, I do still think that IOTA has an incredibly bright future ahead of it. The fact that it is a fearless network that is resilient to spam attacks, and with the upcoming consensus changes, completely decentralized. It means that regardless of what direction they go in, I think they will always have a place in the market. I just think that they'll do better if they keep focusing on what they initially set out to achieve. So if you enjoyed this one, don't forget to leave me a like and a comment down below. If you disagree with me and you think that IOTA needed to change, then comment down below because I'm happy to hear any take on the subject because as I said, it was just my opinion. And if you generally just enjoy my content, you want to see more like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.